Looky, looky what we have here. A Ford GT doing a mission testing out in the wild, which is pretty interesting since production for the GT is expected to end next year. From reading the articles about this mule, the engine sounds very different from the V6 EcoBoost that's currently in the GT. So could we be seeing a V8 final edition? Maybe, or maybe this is a wolf hiding in sheep's clothing because what if I told you that this drivetrain could be for the new Thunderbird for C8 fighter coming the next couple years. So let's get to the stuff. Let's talk about the Ford GT for a second. What do we know? Production is expected to end in 2022. It received a horsepower bump in 2020 to go from around 650 to 660 horsepower. The order process and ownership of a GT is like a complicated tender relationship with Ford, just as John Cena. And this is part of the reason I don't see big engine changes coming to the GT for its final year. People had to apply to Ford to get a car a few years ago and then wait however long till the number was called to spec out their order and actually finish purchasing their GT. Offering a V8 now would be a great way to piss off the early adopters that were lucky enough to get the GT first, but now they won't have an option of getting a V8 because they either wasn't passed over or they had special pool in Ford. It's one thing to do improvements here and there that could be retrofitted like slight horsepower bumps, new liveries, or even doing a liquid carbon edition that costs an extra 250K, yikes. It's another thing entirely to put a V8 in that would be way more valuable because for one thing, it'd be a one year wonder. And number two, I'm pretty sure if there was a V8 option back in like 2016, 2017, almost every owner would have opted for the V8. But I know there would've been a couple stragglers that would've just got the V6 version, just like there was a couple stragglers that didn't get the Demon Crate for the Demon. So if Ford goes bold and offer the V8 in a GT, or they gonna be like, oh, uh, well, you know, you've already purchased a V6 GT, so, if you want the option to trade your V6 version for a V8 or whatever, we'll go ahead and waive that, you know, two year agreement that we went to court by John Cena about. That way, you know, you can apply to get this car. Just saying. For me, there is no way a V8 would pop up in the GT. Now there are rumors of a 5 GT, but we saw a mule running around confirming the slight changes coming to just the roof scoop and the vents. And that car didn't have the extra EPA gear attached to it. You will think a few of them will be popping up here and there on a car set they're gonna sell next year for road testing to ensure that a V8 will have issues in such a small space. But this car with its goofy exhaust, I believe this GT is a misdirect for something else that Ford is working on that I talked about in my other video, the Thunderbird. Now maybe this GT is going to be a track only version that people have a chance to apply for, but if it was, why doesn't it have the roof scoop? But not to step on any toes on my Thunderbird video, go check it out if you haven't done so already. We already know that Ford and Dodge is butt hurt from the C8 Corvette, and massive sale numbers cannot be ignored by the other members of the Big 3. Hold on, can we even call it the Big 3 anymore when Chrysler has been owned by foreign companies for years? I mean, it was Daimler Chrysler and then Fiat Chrysler, and now they're just making minivans without a seat at the table and stilettos. I mean, cilantro. I mean, who am I kidding? The Ram CEO can't get it right. The Stellantis umbrella. <laughs> Stellantis is <laughs> within Stellantis to expand our electrification. Just saying. With Ford already having a rear engine platform and transmission, why not use the GT as a mule? Ford went to great lengths to disguise the Maverick to make it look like some goofy SUV, so why not do this for the Thunderbird? We already know Ford has a C8 running around doing benchmark testing a few weeks ago, and then mysteriously the GT comes out doing testing. So look at it like this. Ford sells a lot of trucks and SUVs, they camouflage one of them. You can pretty accurately guess what this vehicle may become in the near future. Ford only has a Mustang, so they can't have running around a V8 car with an engine in the back completely camoed up and looked totally different from the Ford GT. Everyone would know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that this vehicle would be the replacement Thunderbird. Now, it'll happen in the future because we would see this particular vehicle running around, but they might not have one doing it now because they still might be in the early stage to decide whether they're gonna do it or not. Or God forbid, call it some stupid Mustang name like the Mustang GT, the Mustang Mach-E, maybe a Mustang Fastback, or perhaps a Boss Mustang? If you look at this car, Ford tried to manage the format back in 1969, but didn't go through it because it didn't have enough of gap in performance to justify doing it, and the project was scrapped. So this is also one reason I say that the Viper could come back as a mid-engine car, because in the 90s, they developed a mid-engine Viper, but they just never went through with it because of the Daimler Chrysler merger. So maybe this car is a Thunderbird, maybe they can justify making a mid-engine Mustang, we don't know, I guess we'll see. But seeing as no one at Ford can come up with any names anymore, it'll probably be some goofy Mustang name though. 
Now, I wish there was a video of this particular mule driving around so we get a good idea what engine could potentially be in this car. Looking at the exhaust routing, this thing is obviously turbocharged with the complicated routing of the exhaust coming out the back of this machine. There are reports of Ford working on a twin turbo version of the Godzilla V8 engine. Two F-250 heavy duty truck test mules are said to exist and maybe this GT is number three. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this engine, a version of it exists in a couple of different models, making around 430 horsepower and 475 foot pounds of torque, naturally aspirated. If you look at in this YouTube video, a crate version made over 800 horsepower with a supercharger added on top of it. And if you look at another YouTube video, a twin turbo version made over 1100 horsepower. That's a lot of power this mule could potentially have, depending on what kind of power adders that they add to it. How pissed off would V6 GT owners be if this engine came out for the 4 GT and it could be tuned up to about 1000 horsepower? As far as we know, Mansory was the only company I see running around with a 7 horsepower version of the V6 GT, and that's it. So this will be a significant upgrade for the 4 GT if they were to put the V8 engine in it. But if it was meant for another model such as the Thunderbird or some Mustang based mid-engine car, there are a lot of trim levels that this engine could fill up. A naturally aspirated version with a little bit of tuning could potentially be 500 horsepower-ish. In this article right here, a couple of Boldons got the Godzilla motor to 600 horsepower. So maybe a 500 horsepower version could compete against the base version of the C8. A 600 horsepower naturally aspirated version can compete with the C8 Z06 coming next year. Another cool option would be to use the engine from the discontinued GT3 350R that was around 500 horsepower range and was high revving. And its unique sound would be an awesome choice to compete against the Z06 wherever it debuts next year. So that's one option right there. And then you can just turn the power up from there with the Godzilla motor and use different turbos for the other trims to compete with the C8 Corvette. And don't forget a hybrid drivetrain is coming for the Mustang in the near future. So you combine that all wheel drive and a twin turbo Godzilla motor, you could potentially see a hybrid over 1200 horsepower with a V8. Now the C8 Zora is expected to have the same formula with a 1000 horsepower with a V8 all wheel drive and a hybrid drivetrain. Dodge on the other hand is keeping secret what they could be bringing to the table whether it is a Viper, a Tomahawk or whatever name they could be calling their mid-engine variant. I talked about in this video where Dodge could be using the Maserati MC20 as a base car for the new Viper. The MC20 makes just over 600 horsepower if they use the twin turbo V6 engine that comes in their car, or they can use the long rumor GME T6 power plant that is said to have around 500 inch horsepower. Now, we don't know if that 500 horsepower is before or after electrification, single, or dual turbos, but the sky is the limit if they add assist motors if you check out the Cuda EV video that I did. Now, in that video, Dodge could easily make an over 1000 horsepower hybrid with the assistance of electric motors on the front axles that can go up to 882 horsepower. Of course, they would have to tune it down to make it work in a hybrid setup, but you can kind of get my point to where we can see powerful hybrids coming in the next two years. Now, the only thing that's going to be concerning is how much all these vehicles are going to cost, right? Because you have the super stock right now, that's in the 80K range. You have the GT500, that's in the 80K range. For GT, that's 400, 500K range. So how much would these 1,000 horsepower versions of these cars cost? I mean, even the C8 Corvette option pretty well. Right now, base is around 80K. So could we potentially be seeing 1,000 horsepower vehicles that's in the 100, 105, 110K range? Now we know for right now that Chevy's gonna use the V8 engine in the Corvette for the near future with them using the V8 in the base car, using the V8 in the Z06, and potentially using the V8 in the Corvette Zora version. We know Ford could be using either the V8 in this particular car, whichever powertrain is in this mule that's testing, or they could be doing the EcoBoost just like in the Ford GT that's in now. And as far as we know with Dodge, they're gonna go down the V6 powertrain because I keep hearing from sources that the Hellcat powertrain will die in 2024. So as far as we know for Dodge, they're gonna go down to not V6, but inline turbocharged six cylinder engines and electric drivetrains. But hopefully, more information will leak out in the future about these new engines going to be coming out in 2024. And that's it for this video, guys. Will this be the new Thunderbird or Mustang Fan Spec or whatever they call this new car? It'll be very interesting if this car actually does come out. Will it have a V8 and how much will it cost? Will it cost under 100k to make it competitive with the C8, especially the Z06 version? Will it cost over 100k? And will it be different enough from the GT not to piss off GT owners who spent five? a K on a car that won't be faster than this particular car would become. Another interesting question is, if this car in fact does get made in 2024, how will it affect the value of the 4 GT? And even if this car right here is meant to be the 4 GT with a V8 for this final send off, how will it affect the value of the V6 cars that came out a few years before this particular Halo car would? Would it drop the value of those cars down? Would people have to go into a fire sale to get rid of their V6 GTs? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Leave me a thumbs up to help support me and the channel. And until the next time, I'm out.